incomprehensible, improbable, fucking insane. Somehow the planet Earth, a supposedly toxic radioactive wasteland devoid of life, had billions of humans thriving on its lively surface. Humans lived on Earth. And that impossible revelation stared Cygnus straight in his quivering, disbelieving face. Cygnus rubbed a sleeve of his resplendent flowing diplomat robes across the viewscreen. It showed Earth's electric blue oceans and verdant crisscrossing continents. Billions lived down there. Advanced cities, flourishing vegetation, all on a planet that should be deader than Cygnus's sex life. His colleague Pollux tapped at a holopad. Records state Earth suffered a cataclysm eons ago. Some huge asteroid strike wiped out all life, rendered the atmosphere toxic and barren. But somehow... Somehow those infuriating resourceful apes survived it, Cygnus spat. They didn't just endure the apocalypse, Pollux. They thrived after doomsday, built megacities and rediscovered spaceflight, while the galaxy thought them deader than disco. Pollux's holopad pinged. Speaking of the monkeys, we're being hailed by a human military vessel, the United Earth Space Command. They request an audience. Cygnus's heart raced. This changed everything. If the wider galaxy discovered a resurgent Earth, the geopolitical upheaval would be cataclysmic. Ancient borders redrawn, alliances remade and broken. The humans could emerge as the ultimate wildcard, upending the galactic order and seizing unimaginable power. Unless Cygnus acted first, shaped the narrative and co-opted the humans before the galaxy even knew of their return, there was no time to waste. He straightened his regal robes and inhaled, put them through, Pollux, and ready a shuttle to take us down to the surface. It's time we properly met our distant cousins, before anyone else gets the same idea. The Tellarite viewscreen flickered to life, revealing the rugged visage of Commander Harry Jones. His confident smile radiated through the display as he greeted the stunned diplomats. Greetings, Tellarite vessel. I'm Commander Harry Jones of the UESC. We've been expecting you. Cygnus blinked, his mind still reeling from the impossibility before him. He straightened his posture and cleared his throat. Greetings, Commander Jones. I am Cygnus, and this is my colleague Pollux. We are surprised to find humans thriving on Earth. Our records indicated your world was lost to a cataclysmic event long ago. Jones nodded, his smile unwavering. Ah, yes, the great impact. It's true, our world was devastated by an asteroid strike centuries ago. But we didn't just survive. We adapted and overcame. Pollux leaned forward, his curiosity piqued. But how, Commander? The asteroid should have rendered your planet uninhabitable. The atmospheric toxicity alone should have wiped out your species. A chuckle escaped Jones's lips, his eyes glinting with pride. You underestimate human ingenuity and resilience, Pollux. In the face of extinction, we banded together. Our greatest minds developed advanced technologies to purify our air and water, to rebuild our cities and to safeguard our future. Cygnus stroked his chin, intrigued by the human's words. Remarkable. And what of your civilization now, Commander? Your world appears to be thriving, and you have achieved spaceflight. Jones gestured to the impressive fleet visible through the viewscreen. Indeed, Cygnus, the great impact taught us the importance of unity and innovation. We've not only rebuilt our world, but expanded beyond it. Earth is now the hub of a growing interstellar human civilization, with colonies on multiple worlds and a fleet to defend our interests. Pollux's mind raced with the implications of this revelation. And what of your relations with other species, Commander? Surely you've encountered other civilizations in your expansion? The human's smile took on a more guarded quality. We have, Pollux. Some have been friendly, others less so. But we've learned to defend ourselves and our way of life. The human spirit is not easily broken, and we will not be subjugated or exploited by anyone. Cygnus sensed the weight of history behind Jones's words and nodded solemnly. I believe we have much to discuss, Commander Jones. The Tellarite Confederacy would be honored to establish formal relations with the United Earth Space Command. Jones's eyes gleamed with the promise of a new era. The honor is ours, Cygnus. 
let us begin a new chapter in the history of our peoples, one of friendship, cooperation, and mutual respect. The two diplomats nodded in agreement, the weight of the moment not lost on them, as they prepared to bridge the gap between their civilizations. As the shuttle began its descent through the atmosphere, Jones grinned at the expressions of wonderment on the Tellarite diplomats' faces. He turned to Lieutenant Petrov. Mikhail, let's give our guests a proper introduction to humanity's progress since the Great Impact. Petrov nodded eagerly. Aye, Commander. The shuttle banked, giving Cygnus and Pollux a breathtaking view of the sprawling megalopolises below. Gleaming towers of glass and steel reached skyward, their facades adorned with lush hanging gardens. Pristine waterways threaded between the urban centres, the water sparkling in the sunlight. Petrov gestured to the vista. As you can see, our cities have been rebuilt to harmonize with the environment. We've developed green technologies that allow us to thrive without further damaging our world. Pollux pressed his snout against the viewport, his eyes wide with amazement. Your architecture is stunning, Lieutenant Petrov. How have you achieved such a perfect balance between nature and technology? Petrov grinned, his chest swelling with pride. It wasn't easy, Pollux. After the great impact, we realized that our old ways of unchecked consumption and environmental neglect were unsustainable. We had to reinvent the way we live, work, and build. Tagnus, his gaze sweeping over the lush green spaces woven seamlessly into the urban landscape, shook his head in disbelief. Your people have done a remarkable job, Lieutenant. It's hard to believe that this world was once a barren wasteland. Petrov's expression turned solemn. It's a testament to the indomitable human spirit, Cygnus. When faced with the choice between extinction and adaptation, we chose the latter. And we didn't just adapt, we thrived. As the shuttle touched down at a bustling spaceport, Petrov led the diplomats through throngs of humans and aliens from myriad species. The Tellarites marveled at the diversity of the crowd, the air filled with a cacophony of languages and the mingling scents of exotic cuisines. Pollux, his eyes darting from one alien to the next, commented, I see that Earth has become a hub for interstellar commerce and diplomacy, Lieutenant. Petrov nodded, guiding the group through the spaceport's high-tech security checkpoints with practiced ease. Indeed, Pollux, Earth is now a central player in galactic affairs. We've established trade routes, alliances, and cultural exchanges with numerous species. His expression hardened slightly, but we've also learned to be cautious and protect our interests. Cygnus, intrigued by the lieutenant's shift in tone, probed further. Cautious, lieutenant, have you encountered hostility from other species? Petrov sighed, his brow furrowing. Unfortunately, yes, not all species have been as welcoming as the Tellarites. Some view humanity as a threat, others as a potential target for exploitation. But we've learned from our past, and we refuse to be victims again. As they emerged from the spaceport, the diplomats found themselves standing before a gleaming, modern city, its towers reaching for the heavens. Petrov, his voice filled with quiet determination, turned to face his guests. Welcome to Earth, gentlemen. Let us show you what humanity has achieved and what we have yet to accomplish. As Petrov guides the Tellarite diplomats through the bustling city streets, Cygnus and Pollux find themselves captivated by the marvels that surround them. Sleek, holographic displays flicker to life, showcasing the latest news and entertainment from across the galaxy. Self-driving vehicles glide effortlessly through the traffic, their occupants engrossed in virtual meetings or leisure activities. Robotic assistants, their polished metal frames glinting in the sunlight, move with purpose, aiding humans in various tasks. Pollux, unable to contain his amazement, turns to Petrov. Lieutenant, the technological advancements we've witnessed here are nothing short of astounding. How has Earth managed to achieve such wonders in the relatively short time since the Great Impact? Petrov's lips curve into a knowing smile as he leads the group towards a towering glass and steel structure. Necessity, Pollux. When our world was brought to its knees, we had no choice but to innovate, to push the boundaries of what we thought possible. But our greatest breakthrough came from an unexpected source, 
the very asteroid that nearly destroyed us. Cagnus, his interest piqued, leans closer to Petrov. The asteroid? How could an instrument of destruction become the key to your advancement? As they enter the building, Petrov ushers the diplomats into a secure elevator. Moments later, the doors slide open, revealing a pristine laboratory filled with state-of-the-art equipment. In the center of the room, a group of scientists huddle around a glowing crystalline substance, their faces illuminated by its ethereal light. That, gentlemen, is Novium, Petrov explains, guiding them closer to the mesmerizing display. The asteroid that struck Earth was composed of this rare exotic material. Once we uncovered its properties, it revolutionized our understanding of physics and energy. Pollux, his eyes widening as he takes in the sight of the Novium, can't help but exclaim, Incredible! What sort of properties does this substance possess? Petrov's voice takes on a tone of barely contained excitement. Novium is a superconductor and energy amplifier. It has allowed us to develop clean, sustainable energy sources, faster than light propulsion and even artificial gravity. It's the foundation upon which our technological renaissance is built. Tignus, while impressed, furrows his brow in concern. And what measures have you taken to secure this Novium? Surely such a valuable resource would be highly sought after by other species. Petrov's expression grows somber, his eyes hardening with resolve. You're right, Cygnus. We've had to be vigilant in protecting our Novium reserves. Strict regulations govern its use and trade, and our military is tasked with safeguarding our mining operations. Pollux nods, the gravity of the situation sinking in. It seems that Earth's greatest treasure is also its greatest responsibility. Indeed, Pollux, Petrov agrees solemnly. With great power comes great responsibility. We must use the Novium wisely, not just for our own benefit, but for the betterment of all species. As they leave the laboratory, Cygnus reflects on the implications of Earth's rise. The humans have not only survived, but thrived in the face of adversity. Your resilience and innovation are truly remarkable. Petrov, a hint of pride coloring his voice, responds, Thank you, Cygnus. We've come a long way, but we know there's still much work to be done. Earth may be a beacon of hope and progress, but we must remain vigilant in protecting our way of life. The diplomats nod in agreement, their respect for humanity growing with each new revelation. As they step back out onto the city streets, the gleaming towers and bustling populace take on a new meaning, a testament to the indomitable spirit of a species that refused to surrender to the void. Petrov guides Cygnus and Pollux deeper into the Earth archives, their footsteps echoing through the cavernous halls. The Tellarites marvel at the sheer breadth of human history and culture on display, their eyes darting from one exhibit to the next. As they approach a towering holographic sculpture, Petrov pauses, his voice filled with reverence. This piece represents the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. It's a tribute to those who lost their lives during the great impact and a testament to the strength of those who survived. Tegner steps closer to the sculpture, his gaze tracing the intricate lines and shapes that seem to dance in the air. It's breathtaking, Lieutenant. The emotion captured in this work is palpable. Pollux nods in agreement, his voice hushed. I can feel the pain, the loss, but also the hope and determination. It's as if the sculpture itself embodies the human experience. Petrov smiles, his eyes glistening with pride. That's precisely what we aimed to achieve with the archives. We wanted to create a space where our history and culture could be experienced, not just observed. As they continue their tour, Cygnus notices a group of young humans gathered around an interactive display. The children are engrossed in the images and stories, their faces alight with curiosity and wonder. It's heartening to see the next generation so engaged with their history, Cygnus remarks, gesturing towards the children. Petrov nods, a thoughtful expression on his face. Education is key, Cygnus. By ensuring that our children understand our past, we equip them to build a better future. The archives play a vital role in that process. Pollux, his mind whirring with the implications of Earth's cultural renaissance, muses, The Earth archives could serve as a model for other species, Lieutenant. 
a way to preserve and celebrate our unique histories while fostering understanding and cooperation. Petrov's eyes shine with excitement at the prospect. That's an inspiring thought, Pollux. Imagine a galaxy where every species has its own archives, where we can learn from one another's triumphs and challenges. It would be a powerful force for unity. As the diplomats approach a vast interactive map of Earth, Cygnus is struck by the transformation of the planet's surface. Where once there were scars of destruction, now there are thriving cities and lush landscapes. Your world has undergone a remarkable metamorphosis, Lieutenant, Cygnus observes, his voice filled with admiration. It's a testament to the tenacity and ingenuity of your people. Petrov nods, his finger tracing the outlines of the continents. We've worked tirelessly to heal the wounds of the past, Cygnus, but we know that our work is far from over. The great impact taught us that we must be vigilant, that we must always strive for a better, more sustainable future. Pollux, his gaze fixed on the map, remarks, and you've done so with a sense of purpose and unity that is truly admirable. Your people have not only reclaimed your world, but have forged a new path for yourselves and the galaxy. Petrov turns to face the diplomats, his expression one of gratitude and determination. Thank you, Pollux. We know that the road ahead is long, but we are committed to walking it together as one human race and as part of the galactic community. As Cygnus and Pollux conclude their tour of the Earth archives, Commander Jones approaches them, his eyes sparkling with excitement. Gentlemen, I have something special to show you. Please follow me. Intrigued, the diplomats accompany Jones and Petrov to a secure hangar bay within the archives complex. The doors slide open with a hiss, revealing a sleek, advanced spacecraft unlike anything the Tellarites have ever seen. Its elegant lines and powerful engines speak to a level of technological mastery that leaves them awestruck. Pollux's jaw drops. By the stars, what is this marvel of engineering? Jones puffs out his chest with pride. This, my friends, is the EXS Odyssey, the first human starship equipped with a novium-powered faster-than-light drive. It represents the pinnacle of our technological achievements and our commitment to peaceful exploration. Cygnus walks around the ship, his eyes roaming over every detail. It's a work of art, Commander. Your people have truly mastered the art of starship design. Thank you, Cygnus, Jones says, leading the group closer to the Odyssey. The Odyssey is more than just a starship. It's a symbol of our determination to forge a new path in the galaxy, one of discovery and cooperation. Petrov gazes at the ship with reverence. The Odyssey will serve as a platform for scientific research, diplomatic missions, and cultural exchange. It will carry the best and brightest of humanity to the farthest reaches of the galaxy, fostering understanding and unity among the stars. Pollux's mind races with the possibilities. This could be a game-changer, Commander. With a ship like the Odyssey, you could not only explore uncharted regions of space, but also establish new alliances and trade routes. Jones's expression turns serious. You're right, Pollux, but we must also be cautious. Not all species may welcome our presence, and some may seek to exploit our technology for their own gain. The Odyssey must be a beacon of hope, not a target for aggression. Cygnus nods in understanding. Your people have learned much from your past, Commander. You have the wisdom to balance progress with caution, innovation with responsibility. A smile spreads across Jones's face, his eyes reflecting the determination of the human spirit. Thank you, Cygnus. We have indeed learned, and we will continue to learn. The Odyssey represents a new chapter in human history, one in which we reach out to the stars not as conquerors, but as explorers and friends. As the diplomats gaze upon the EXS Odyssey, they can't help but feel a sense of awe and respect for the humans who have risen from the ashes of catastrophe to become a shining example of resilience and unity in the galaxy. The ship stands before them as a testament to the indomitable human spirit, a promise of a brighter future forged through cooperation and understanding. Jones leads them closer to the ship, his hand resting on the gleaming hull. Would you like to see inside, gentlemen? 
I think you'll find the Odyssey's interior just as impressive as her exterior. Jones leads Cygnus and Pollux through the Odyssey's gleaming corridors, the ship's advanced systems humming with power as they make their way to the command center. The Tellarite diplomats exchange concerned glances, the gravity of the situation weighing heavily upon them. As they enter the command center, a flurry of activity greets them. Human officers and technicians work at their stations, their faces illuminated by the glow of holographic displays. Jones strides to the central console, his expression stern as he addresses the room. A young officer, her fingers flying across her console, responds, Commander, the Earth Defense Fleet is mobilizing. The Odyssey will be ready to depart in fifteen minutes. Jones nods, his eyes scanning the tactical displays. Good. Make sure all systems are fully operational. We don't know what we're up against out there. Tegnus, his brow furrowed with concern, steps forward. Commander Jones, if I may, the Tellarite Confederacy stands ready to assist in any way we can. Our fleet is at your disposal. Jones turns to the Tellarite diplomat, a flicker of gratitude in his eyes. Thank you, Cygnus. Your offer is greatly appreciated, but this is a human matter. We must defend our own. Pollux, sir, his voice tinged with admiration, interjects, Your people's resolve is truly remarkable, Commander. To face an unknown adversary with such courage and determination... Jones smiles grimly, his gaze returning to the tactical displays. It's what we do, Pollux. Humanity has faced countless challenges throughout our history. This is just another obstacle to overcome. Petrov, his hand resting on the hilt of his sidearm, adds, And overcome it we shall. The Zorgans, or whoever is behind this attack, will learn the true strength of the human spirit. As the command center buzzes with activity, the Tellarite diplomats watch in awe as the human officers work in perfect unison, their dedication and efficiency a testament to their training and resolve. Jones, his voice filled with quiet determination, turns to Cygnus and Pollux. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we must cut our tour short. Lieutenant Petrov will escort you to a secure location until the crisis has passed. Cygnus nods, his expression solemn. We understand, Commander. The safety of your people must come first. Pollux, his voice filled with conviction, adds, and we have no doubt that you will emerge victorious. The Tellarite Confederacy stands with you even if only in spirit. Jones clasps the Tellarite diplomat's shoulder, a gesture of friendship and gratitude. Your support means more than you know, Pollux. We will keep you informed of the situation as it develops. As Petrov leads the diplomats from the command center, the Odyssey's engines roar to life. The ship preparing to lead the Earth Defense Fleet into the unknown, Jones, his eyes fixed on the view screen, whispers a silent prayer for the safety of his people and the success of their mission. The fate of the Novium mining colony, and perhaps the future of humanity itself, now rests in the hands of the brave men and women aboard the Odyssey and the ships of the Earth Defense Fleet. A hush fell over the Tellarite shuttle's cockpit as Cygnus and Pollux stared wide-eyed at the comm display. The desperate pleas of the Titan colonists echoed in their ears, a chilling reminder of the stakes at hand. Pollux shook his head, his voice trembling. By the stars, Cygnus, those poor miners, under attack, requesting immediate evacuation. The terror in that human's voice. Cygnus gripped the armrest, his knuckles pale. I know, Pollux, but we must have faith. The humans are a resilient species. They won't abandon their own. As if summoned by Cygnus's words, Commander Jones's voice crackled through the comms. Titan Colony, this is Commander Jones of the Earth Defense Fleet. We are en route to your location and will arrive in approximately 30 minutes. Reinforcements are inbound. Hold fast. Help is on the way. Pollux blinked, his brow furrowing. 30 minutes? But Titan is nearly an hour away at maximum FTL speeds. How can they possibly... Understanding dawned on Cygnus's face. The Novium Drive. It must be even more powerful than we realized. The humans have truly mastered faster than light travel. The minutes crawled by, each second an eternity, as the Tellarite diplomats listened to the tense chatter between the Earth Defense Fleet and the besieged colony. The EXS Odyssey took point, 
its novium-powered engines propelling it through the void at impossible speeds. Suddenly a triumphant shout burst from the comms. Titan Colony, this is the EXS Odyssey. We have visual confirmation of the enemy fleet, engaging now. The cockpit filled with the cacophony of battle. The sizzle of energy weapons, the boom of explosions, the crackle of strained shields. Through the chaos, the human ships shone like beacons, their novium-enhanced weapons cutting swathes through the alien ranks. Pollux gaped at the display, his voice a reverent whisper. Incredible. The humans have not only survived but thrived. They've become a formidable military power in their own right. Fergnus nodded, his eyes never leaving the comm screen. And they wield that power not for conquest, but for the defense of their people and allies. The galaxy could learn much from their example. As the battle raged on, the tide turned inexorably in the humans' favor. The alien ships, outmatched and outgunned, began to break formation, fleeing before the might of the Earth Defense Fleet. A cheer went up from the Titan colony, as the last of the attackers winked out of existence, their retreat complete. The humans had once again proven their mettle, their strength and unity, a shining beacon in the face of adversity. As the Tellarite shuttle docked with the EXS Odyssey, Cygnus and Pollux found themselves greeted by a sea of jubilant human faces. The crew, still riding high on the adrenaline of their recent victory, cheered and clapped as the diplomats disembarked, their expressions a mix of pride and relief. Commander Jones stepped forward, his uniform bearing the scars of battle. Despite the weariness etched into his features, he managed a warm, genuine smile. Cygnus, Pollux, welcome aboard the Odyssey. I apologize for the abrupt end to your visit to Earth, but as you can see, duty called. Cygnus, his voice filled with admiration, clasped Jones's hand firmly. No apologies necessary, Commander. We witnessed firsthand the bravery and skill of your people. The Earth Defense Fleet's victory at Titan was nothing short of remarkable. Jones nodded, his smile tinged with humility. Thank you, Cygnus. Our crew performed admirably, but we couldn't have done it without the support of allies like the Tellarite Confederacy. As they made their way through the Odyssey's gleaming corridors, Pollux's curiosity got the better of him. Speaking of Titan, have you learned anything about the attackers? Who were they, and why did they target your Novium mining colony? Jones's expression darkened, his brow furrowing. We've identified the attackers as a rogue Zorgan faction, one that has broken away from the main Zorgan Empire. It seems they were after our Novium reserves, likely to fuel their own expansionist ambitions. Cygnus felt a chill run down his spine. The Zorgans were known throughout the galaxy for their ruthlessness and tenacity. Do you anticipate further attacks, Commander? The Zorgans are not an enemy to be taken lightly. Jones met Cygnus's gaze, his eyes hardening with determination. We do, Cygnus, but we'll be ready. The attack on Titan has only strengthened our resolve to protect our people and our allies. We won't let the Zorgans or any other hostile force threaten the peace we've worked so hard to build. Pollux, moved by Jones's words, placed a hand on the commander's shoulder. And you won't stand alone, Commander. The Tellarite Confederacy stands with Earth, ready to face any challenge that lies ahead. Jones's smile returned, his eyes glistening with gratitude. Thank you, my friend. Your support means more than you know. As they entered the Odyssey's command center, a hive of activity and purpose, Jones turned to the Tellarite diplomats, his expression one of hope and determination. Cygnus, Pollux, I know our visit was cut short, but I hope you've seen enough to understand what Earth and humanity have to offer. We may be young compared to other galactic civilizations, but we have much to contribute and much to learn. Cygnus, his heart swelling with admiration and respect, met Jones's gaze. You're right, Commander. Earth has proven itself to be a shining example of resilience, innovation, and unity. The Tellarite Confederacy would be honored to call you friends and allies. As the Odyssey set course for Earth, the bonds of friendship and cooperation between the two species grew stronger, forged in the crucible of shared adversity and common purpose. The galaxy may be vast and filled with challenges, but together they would face whatever lay ahead. 
united in their determination to build a brighter future for all. As the Ikas Odyssey glides through the void of space, her hull gleaming in the starlight, Cygnus and Pollux find themselves seated across from Commander Jones in the ship's briefing room. The room's sleek lines and advanced holographic displays serve as a stark contrast to the somber expressions worn by the room's occupants. Jones leans forward, his brow furrowed and his voice heavy with concern. Cygnus, Pollux, I'm afraid I have some troubling news. Our intelligence network has uncovered a disturbing development in the wake of the Zorgon attack on Titan. Cygnus, his hands clasped tightly before him, meets Jones's gaze, his own voice tinged with apprehension. What have you learned, Commander? The human takes a deep breath, his eyes darkening as he speaks. It seems the Zorgon faction that attacked Titan was not acting alone. They were part of a larger coalition of hostile species, united in their fear and envy of humanity's rapid rise to power. This coalition, led by the Zorgons, plans to launch a coordinated assault on Earth itself. Pollux's eyes widen, his voice rising in alarm. An attack on Earth? But why? Surely they must realize such an act would only lead to all-out war. Jones nods grimly, his expression hardening. They do, Pollux, but they believe that by striking now, while humanity is still relatively new to the galactic stage, they can crush us before we become an even greater threat to their ambitions. Cygnus, his mind racing with the implications of this revelation, leans forward, his voice urgent. What do you plan to do, Commander? How can the Tellarite Confederacy assist in Earth's defense? The Commander sighs, his eyes reflecting a mix of determination and sorrow. We appreciate your offer of support, Cygnus, but I'm afraid this is a battle humanity must fight alone. We cannot risk drawing our allies into a war that could consume the entire galaxy. Pollux, his voice filled with concern, shakes his head vehemently. But, Commander, surely there must be another way. Diplomacy, negotiations, anything to avoid the devastation of war. Jones smiles sadly, his eyes filled with a knowing pain. I wish there were, Pollux. But the Zorgons and their allies have made their intentions clear. They will not rest until humanity is brought to its knees, or worse, wiped out entirely. We must stand firm and defend our home no matter the cost. Cygnus, his heart heavy with understanding, nods solemnly. We understand, Commander. The Tellarite Confederacy will respect your decision, but know that our thoughts and hopes are with you and your people in this dark hour. As the Odyssey enters Earth's orbit, her powerful engines thrumming with barely contained energy, Jones turns to the Tellarite diplomats one last time. Cygnus Pollux, I want you to know that meeting you and learning about your people has been an honor. Whatever happens in the days to come, remember that humanity will always strive for peace, even in the face of overwhelming adversity. With heavy hearts, Cygnus and Pollux bid farewell to Commander Jones and the crew of the Odyssey. As their shuttle departs, they watch as the Earth Defense Fleet mobilizes, the ship's novium-powered engines flaring to life, preparing for the battle that will decide the fate of not just humanity, but the entire galaxy. The future is uncertain, and the road ahead is fraught with danger, but one thing is clear. The humans of Earth, once thought lost to the stars, have risen to become a force to be reckoned with, their strength and determination. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.